scanner. They just scan the barcode on the ID card and, and the voter register is there. If you have that type of identity document available, this is a great solution. Without that, you may have to fall back to even such things as well, birth certificates uh, in, in one of the countries that that was the primary source of, of identity and also proof of age. Um, one of the countries in the group went back to an old social security card as our primary ID document. So this is one of the things that we've got to consider um, when we're deciding on the voter re registration methodology. Um, beyond that, if there's not adequate identification for voters already in the country, then the election management body should be considering if they need to provide some type of uh, additional card for, for voters to be able to identify themselves on election day. So there are two different identity issues. The first identity issue is I am who I say I am and I'm eligible to vote, so now I'm on the register. The second identity issue is on election day, once I show up at the, at the polling station, how can I prove to you that I am that person whose name is on the, on the roll? If there's not already identification documents available or ID cards, then the EMB has to figure out some way to facilitate identification of the voter. Um, this has been done through issuance of voter ID cards or identifying what other types of ID cards that are already issued are acceptable. One innovation that, that I, I like a lot and is, is growing in acceptance is printing a photo voter list. Um, if we're already capturing voters' photos, then um, by printing them on the list, it makes it very difficult. If I give you an ID card, you may be able to forge that or change your photo on it or make duplicates of it. But if I've produced your photo on the voters list and it's in every polling station, it's very difficult for you to go in there and alter that. Um, and so all of these fall down to the, the, the critical question in this is to decide ahead of time and, and make it a, a clear decision and part of public information to let people know what's required as proof of identity in order to receive a ballot. Now, beyond um, just proving identity, there's, there's also an eligibility to vote. And the, the highest level of this is easy. If I meet the constitutional requirements, I'm eligible to vote in the national election. However, in yesterday's presentations, there were a couple of mentions of, of registration processes that didn't take into consideration the different needs of, of determining eligibility for local government elections or, or um, lower level elections. Um, one of the biggest examples that I know was Afghanistan, where due to time constraints, in part, they registered everybody, but they, they didn't really capture any geographical location for, for the voters. Consequently, they were able to do a national election. Everyone was happy. When it came time to do um, the, the local government elections, they had one big list of voters. And it's impossible then to go back and later assign to people um, where they're supposed to vote. Now, what's really critical in this is a concept of geographical granularity. What that means is that the smaller granules that I can have and where I define where you live, the better equipped I am for, for managing elections. Sometimes, due to time constraints or other, the best that I can do is determine what region or district you live in. But if, if that's all I can get, I have to proceed with the knowledge that I'm, I'm creating a register that may be inadequate for future use for local government elections. Going down to a smaller, knowing the town or the village or the neighborhood is, is also helpful. And for assigning people to polling stations, though, that still may not be enough. If I can get down to an address system, and this was one of the issues that came up in our afternoon session yesterday, is that many countries don't have really good, adequate, well-defined systems of addresses, but if you have one, it really ought to be a part of the voter register to say that this house is where this person lives. Short of that, or if you have the, the infrastructure, by far the best is to have some type of GPS coordinates 
where I can say, this spot on the earth is where the person lives. However, to do that and to make it useful then requires a whole big infrastructure to support that with digitized maps and geographical information system. Collecting the data, though, nowadays is fairly simple. Um, you know, using small handheld GPS um, units that are, you know, you can now pick up for $200 each. You can at least identify where people are so that for future use um, you have that um, for, for defining constituencies and polling stations. Um, the next factor that is a decision of the um, election management body in most cases is determining once we've got um, all